Nigel, in the background, we can hear the sweet tones of brush cutters and chainsaws. Yeah. Not a sound immediately associated with butterflies, nor indeed snow. No, well, we didn't have any choice over the snow. <laughs> um, but we do find that using machines, we get the work done much more quickly. And we are trying to improve the habitat for butterflies, which is what we're always trying to do here. The long-term aim here is to almost get this into a sort of a semi pastoral setting is, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, I, mean, I think ultimately we should manage this as if it, if it, as if it was a, uh, a low input sustainable farming project mm. and um, well, this is the beginning. And for the farmer to, to sell beef, Mount, Mount Fancy Beef or? Mount Fancy Beef or Naroche Beef, mm. I mean that has been suggested that the, the grazing scheme in the parcels of land in Naroche Forest which have been cleared uh, should be should produce meat, should produce uh, beef probably, which will have the label Naroche product of Naroche Forest. This, your butterfly reserves here, sits within the Naroche Forest wider project, mm. project which is a, a land, what, what are they calling it? It's a landscape scale project? It's a landscape scale uh, conservation project, mm. yes. So this is, all these different parcels of land are supposed to link together. And that's largely turning back afforestation back to agricultural farmland so really. Presumably before the Second World War these would have been small holdings, mm -hmm. maybe part, maybe common land grazed by farmers with small herds of cattle, probably never made any money. Uh, and now uh, after the war Forest Commission planted them up for conifers. They're now having their remit changed so that this some areas in the Roche Forest are being cleared and uh, it's a quite an exciting scheme, actually. Is it realistic to ask a farmer to extensively graze with the idea of making money well, I think with, without much in the way of grant aid? I think there will be, has to be grant aid at the moment. Mm. Uh, otherwise, the meat the product is going to have to be so very expensive. Mm. Um, a few people will be able to buy it, afford to buy it, but uh, not very many people, mm. um, especially if if, if we're in competition with incredibly cheap imports from abroad. Mm. So in, in many respects we're at an advanced stage of conservation management but we're at a, a new stage, we're at a stage where you're incorporating farming as a production scheme into conservation. Which well, I think conservation in the past it's had this this image that conservation has put a fence up around the nature reserve and inside was conservation and outside was farmland. And I think we're now we're realising that we're going to have to, to farm this land because the, the wildlife interest was here originally because it was farmed. Mm. It was farmed in a, in a, in a sustainable, small-scale way, mm. not intensively like a lot of land down in the Vale. And that's the way we've got to manage it if we're going to keep the butterflies and wildflowers and everything else that's here. Are most people in the conservation movement as enlightened as you about incorporating farming into the scheme? Oh, I think it's growing. It's growing a lot. And a lot of it's linked to the new grant schemes because there is Natural England money uh, in the form of high-level stewardship or uh, the other stewardship money which encourages people to farm the land and gives them grants to subsidise their farming to make it, well, not unprofitable. It's about minus two, I think, so before you completely freeze, uh, you get back, better get back to work. Get back to work. And indeed, thank press Gang much. and me into work. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Nigel. <laughs>